The Haiti 2010 earthquake, measured with a magnitude of seven, resulted in the death of over 159,000 people. Just a month later, an earthquake with 500 times more energy struck Chile, resulting in the death of 520 people. At approximately the same time, another earthquake with a similar magnitude to the Haitian one occurred in a Japanese island, slightly injuring only two people. How can we explain these different impacts? Hi, I'm Dr. Buria Adini, the head of the Emergency and Disaster Management Department of the Tel Aviv University. So what makes relatively similar events result in very different consequences? The answer lies in our preparedness for such events and capacity to effectively respond to them. Actually, an event evolves into a disaster when we are unable to manage it based on the available resources. The results are death, damage to community, or a substantial impact on the society. We can thus define a disaster as an occurrence disrupting normal existence, causing suffering that exceeds the capacity of adjustment of the affected community. In other words, the afflicted community needs external assistance in order to overcome the impact of the adversity. How can we assure the safety and well-being of people, animals, environment, and societies at large during disaster? This is what disaster management is all about. Disaster management consists of all activities designed to plan for and respond to adversities aimed at preventing or reducing their negative impact. This includes assessing the risk that pose a threat to our well-being, identifying vulnerability, designing contingency plans, evaluating obstacles and gaps, learning lessons, and maintaining an ongoing vigilance to potential new risks. So how can we more effectively prepare for the next disaster? It's not so simple, as the only thing we know for certainty is that tomorrow's disaster will not be the same as yesterday's. Each event differs from the other in its location, the scope of the afflicted population, extent of damage, availability of responders, accessibility to resources, and more. As we don't know exactly how the disaster will evolve, what we need to do is prepare general principles or guidelines for action rather than concrete protocols that are appropriate only to specific situation. Principles enable us to adapt our response to the characteristics of the adversities that actually occurred. This enhances our ability to perform more appropriately. One fundamental principle of disaster management is readiness for four main phases. The first is mitigation which means minimizing the effects of the disaster. For example, installing alert system so that we can have enough time to evacuate people from dangerous situations. The second phase is preparedness of actions that increase our safety, such as designing plans or training our responders. The third is the response phase, in which we implement actions to minimizing the impact of the event, such as activation of certain rescue teams or provision of medical care. The last phase is recovery that aims to return the community to normalcy or even to bounce forward. An effective disaster management is thus based on an ongoing process of planning for and reducing the impact of a disaster, reacting during and immediately following a disaster, and taking measures to recover. So how do we decide what to prepare for? We need to conduct a risk assessment designated to identify the hazard that pose a threat to our society and our vulnerability to it. In accordance, we define the reference scenario, which is the description of what the potential disaster may entail, including its scope of damage to humans, societies, and infrastructure. Then we can proceed to develop a plan to effectively prepare and respond to it. The reference scenario is vital to build preparedness, but once a disaster occurs, it's irrelevant. In Haiti, for example, despite the existence of a reference scenario, the vital action following the earthquake was assessment of the actual damage, recognition of what happened, understanding its impact on people and their environment, and predicting the outcomes that may follow. These three elements of recognition, comprehension, and projection are named as situation awareness. Based on the situation awareness, 
We design the response to the disaster. Now that we understand what a disaster is, the phases we need to consider, and some tools that we may use to ensure our well-being, are we set to effectively plan a response? Almost. We must take into account the impact of disasters on varied systems such as the healthcare, economy, environment, judicial systems, and more. We need to coordinate all actions with interdisciplinary stakeholders so that together we can make our society more resilient. <laughs>